mitigate his uh, stress and anxiety and his nerves and replace it with your peace and guidance. And I ask that you please open all of our hearts to hear your message in your most heavenly and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, right. Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So, your will, not mine, be done. We've all heard this. It's easy to say, isn't it? But within this short phrase is a summation of a lot of our theology. The notion isn't necessarily uniquely Christian, but the you in the sentence certainly is. God gave us free will, and with it, the power and authority to control an amount of things in our lives. He gave us the power to choose between either good or bad, right or wrong, um, and what to do in our lives. He gave us authorities of positions as mothers or fathers, as priests, bishops, as governors, presidents, prime ministers, doctors, judges, and the authority that comes with those positions. But within these small and, by the way, limited positions of authority, there's necessarily comes the submission to some higher authority. Doctors have to pass a test to get a medical license, which can then be revoked for malpractice. Priests have to go through formation. Parents are supposed to go through formation. You know, may, even if not everybody does it still today, we in the Catholic Church do. Judges have appeals courts. Presidents can be impeached and removed from office, and so on and so forth. Yet in these modern times in which we live, and despite history showing the folly of this, people seem to want to neglect any sense of submission to higher authority simply because they don't want to be prevented from doing what they want to do. There's an old song that I love, Ain't Nobody's Business What I Do. Singers from Billie Holiday to Rihanna and Chris Brown have sung this notion, nothing's got authority over me. But really, is that right? Of course, you guys are at the peak of the time of your life where you want to exert your authority over this world. You're getting prepared to leave your parents' house and their authority and to gain your own authority over how you order your lives. So let's talk about that for a minute, your parents and their authority. First, let me say there's not all authority figures exercise their authority properly. Some in positions of power abuse their authority. This is, of course, horribly destructive to those under that person's authority and possibly to the entire systems in which they operate. One only need only to consider the abuses of authorities by priests, politicians, cops, FBI agents, and even sometimes judges to understand the abuse of authority can leave a wake of destruction that is incalculable in cost. But that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. And we can talk about that all night. But we're going to save that for another life night. Tonight, we're talking about the rightful and just exercise of authority and the right alignment to authority by people, all right? So back to your parents. There's no way I could pass up the chance as a parent to hit this subject. I mean, I was a teen like you, most parents were, but I was in a lot of ways a teen very much not like you. I flouted authority almost every chance I got. I've told a small group in the, uh, I've told my small group in the past of an incident that happened to me when I was a junior in high school. Our school is having this standardized test for all juniors, and each day for three days, all juniors are brought into the lunchroom to take this test. We were given an hour for the test, but since the rule was that everybody had to be given as much time as they needed to take the test, we were all instructed to put our pencils down as a sign that we were finished so the teachers would know they could end the test. Well, the whole school had to stop, they told us, because no bell could ring because they didn't want to distract us. So even people in the other grades, everybody was supposed to stay put in their classrooms until the test was complete. They would wait until everybody's done and, and then life would resume normal. We were almost like quarantined, right? And this was day one of a three-day event. Well, to give you a little background, I was on the math team and day one was the math section. This is what I did with the power and authority they put in my hands that day. I drug out the test longer than anyone else in my grade for over 30 minutes after the last person who needed their time took to finish i kept their entire school hostage i never looked up but i left three unmarked answers and i just sat there and i could see at the corner of my eyes the teachers getting frustrated and whispering and pacing finally someone went and got the math team coach 
and he came to me and said, Marco, my boss just came to tell me about one of my math team members holding the whole school up. You made your point. It's not funny anymore. And my mm -mm is on the line. Well, needless to say, I totally abused the authority I had at that moment. So I say all this to tell you, I get not wanting to submit to authority or to bucket, especially teachers, parents, et cetera. And frankly, you're supposed to be wanting to exercise authority more and more over your life right now. That's healthy if done properly. And here lies the problem, finding the line. One thing that's hard to see from your vantage point is that everybody has to submit to a higher authority. I tell the joke about the kid who was so angry of his parents telling him what to do that when he turned 18, he packed a suitcase and told his parents, I'm sick and tired of you guys telling me what to do all the time and how to live my life. I'm out of here. I'm going to join the army. <laughs> yeah, right, because the army tells you what to do all the time. It's very unsettling for me at my age, um, and I'm 30 years out of high school, but I see friends still stuck trying to fight the same authority fights that they had when they were in high school. Because it's part of the maturing process to realize once you gain a measure of authority over your life in a small way when you go to college, but in a real big way when you get a mortgage or have to pay for yourself fully, that fighting authority is less and less encompassing of who you are. And it doesn't always go away, but it, it decreases. You're gaining authority over yourself. So who are you supposed to fight about that? You will become responsible for yourself. And you will have authority to choose what you fill your life with. And thus, you lose a sense of conflict, if one ever existed, with your parents' authority. So I'd like you to do, a, do something with me. Imagine you're 8 to 10 years into the future. You're fully out of school. You have a job. You're paying for yourself. You rent your mortgage. You're making all the decisions for your life. And you have the responsibility to hold it all together and to make it work you realize how hard it is to pay the bills and to take care of your place and to do your job every day and to wake up and to put up with your boss who frankly sometimes acts like a jerk so, and, and feed a pet, do everything for yourself. So take all that and consider all the weight and responsibility you have that comes with the authority you now have just over your own life. And from this vantage point, in this place, imagine back on your life today and try and imagine the weight and responsibility of authority that your parents or caregivers have for you and your brothers and sisters and maybe an ailing parent and themselves. And think of their wanting to best prepare you for where you are standing looking back. I know it's a bit of a mind trip, but I want to get you trying to get you in that place where you're able to look back on where you are today so you can imagine being sympathetic to what your authority figures are going through with you and what they really want to accomplish for you. Because with authority comes responsibility hand in hand. Every authority position as you go higher and higher comes with greater and greater responsibility. So with greater authority, with great authority comes great responsibility, Ethan. Cops have authority to arrest people who seem to be breaking laws, to bring them to, to a judge, but they have the responsibility to do it according to the prevailing laws themselves. Judges have the responsibility to ensure that justice is served when two parties are in disagreement over a matter. Priests and bishops have the responsibility to lead their flocks to ever closer relationship with God. And God himself took on the responsibility for all of our sins through the crucifixion and death of Christ so that we may have everlasting life in a state of grace with him. So back to those who want to believe that it's nobody's business what you do, while that's a compelling argument for gluttony, lust, or greed, etc., do you think that people who want to take on the authority that is God's over all the universe across all times, over everything, are ready to take on the responsibility that this brings? 
Is there any question that they're simply not understanding the big picture? That they're seeing only a little piece of the puzzle and thinking, I live on an island. What I do has no effect on anyone else. Of course, everything we do as part of the body of Christ touches other parts of that body. And by the nature of the baptism that made you part of that body, you bear the responsibility as priest, prophet, and king to align to God's authority. And let's be thankful that God's provided us with his authority to lean on. He has told us of his will. He has asked us to submit to it and his authority by giving up his son on the cross for us. He gave us a guidebook, which at its most basic says, submit to my authority and will, and you will have eternal life in heaven. Finally, I want to tell you about the peace that comes from understanding authority and its rightful place in your life. You can go live on your island, but islands are lonely when you're by yourself. When you submit to God's just authority, things start to line up spiritually within you and peace comes. It doesn't mean that adversity leaves you. I wish this were the case. But a certain peace from the Holy Spirit comes into your heart when you stop fighting God's will and surrender your own to his authority. This is what I wish I understood when I was your age, that submission to God's authority and his will can bring peace into your heart, especially in these times of uncertainty. Well, today's Pentecost. Today in Mass, we heard Jesus bestow a mighty authority on his disciples breathing on to them and saying, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The authority to do this is bigger than any authority that could have come from man. It's an authority to do to which we are called to submit because his will is just and because he loves us. So, Whose will is going to be done in your life? His or yours? And that's all. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Marco. Yep. Um, so we can go back into gallery so we can see everyone. Now... I just want to say, because when we talked about this with the core team, none of what was going on today in the past couple of days, few days, um, was going on. <laughs> so, so if that's something we need to talk about, we can, because it's so, but we really wanted to talk about rightful authority today and not abuse of authority that we might be seeing, you know, that we have seen in a, in a very ugly way in our country. So I just wanted to get that out because I know we're dealing with some pretty scary stuff. And if you need, we need to talk about it, that's fine, but let's save it for the end. And let's talk about the just authority and listening to God's authority for now. Is that all right? Does that make sense? Yep, I think we're good. Okay. Um, so the sort of icebreaker, is what we're calling a whip around. So basically, um, everyone, you might want to turn your mics on because people are going to um, basically rattle off an authority figure in your life and basically just keep going around until someone gets stuck. But make sure you don't repeat anyone who came before you. Um, but if someone gets stuck, obviously let the others chime in and help. Um, so if someone wants to start us off, Name an authority figure in your life. Jonathan. My mom. Yep. Someone else? 